Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is February the 29th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good on a leap year. Uh, let's see here. Um, also, I totally forgot that it was a leap year until I, you know, woke up today, saw the little Google frog on my page, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay, cool, it makes sense, every four years, duh. Um, so yeah, I forgot about that, you know, newsy shoutouts, that'll come tomorrow, provided I remember, don't let me forget. Uh, let's see here, though, but yeah, my day has been great. I have uh, decided that I was going to take a little bit of me time again, why not, treat myself in honor of the new Dune. Dune 2, baby. Well, it's technically Dune Part 2, but I will say I'm already excited before I even sit down to see the movie because the next part, uh, which is Dune 2 officially, uh, book-wise, Dune Messiah, it, the the director, uh, Denis Villeneuve, whatever the fuck his name is, I can't pronounce it, um, he said, I'm get, we're, gonna, we're already writing that part. I'm like so stoked. So I'm already very happy. The wish fulfillment is very real for me today. And I said, you know what? I'm not even going to do a full day of work. And luckily my supervisor approved it. Hell yeah. I'd love to see it. So yeah, today's been good. I, I didn't work that hard. Didn't work that much. Uh, I mean, I worked hard enough. I, I stayed steady crushing that cardboard, baby. Um, but yeah, today's been good. And um, let's see here. Food wise, food corner. We had pasta last night, so pasta, uh, salad, and uh, some bread, the usual. Let's see here. There's really nothing else to report. I got a burp. There it is. Oof. Also, this is a bit of a wine episode. Wine episode. I'm whining about it a little bit. Uh, I got some really crappy one at the gas station, though I will say. It's, you know, about the same kind of crappy red wine that I'm going to get at, you know, my local spirit shop. So it is what it is. I'm not mad about it. I think it's like Apothic Red this time. So yay, that. We'd love to see it. Uh, also, I think it's very fun to um, chase a shot of bourbon with red wine. This really just uh, goes pairs together so well. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and um, do my startup, and then we'll get into some news. Gotta say, uh, it's some hard hitters today. It's definitely not not an easy episode. Most of mine aren't. I try to do what I can, though. But you know how it goes. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Um, first story comes from CNN. More than 100 killed amid Israeli gunfire and panic at Gaza food lines, Palestinian officials and witnesses say. More than 100 people were killed in northern Gaza after Israeli troops opened fire as a hungry Palestinian as hungry Palestinian civilians were gathering around food trucks, food aid trucks. Palestinian officials and eyewitnesses said people had swarmed around new, uh, newly arrived aid trucks in western Gaza City in the hope of getting food when Israeli forces started shooting, according to witnesses. Many of the victims died when they were run over by trucks in the ensuing panic, according to one account. Uh, let's see. The Palestinian Ministry of Health in Gaza said 104 were killed and more than 700 injured in the incident. One of the deadliest since the war in Gaza began. CNN is unable to independently confirm the figures and Israeli military has given a different account of the circumstances. Of course they fucking have. Um, let me, I kind of want to just read to that point. I do want to add this though. We've kind of touched on it, I think the other day, but the tragedy comes as the death toll in Gaza and the Gaza war surpasses 30,000. More than half a million people in Gaza on the brink of famine United Nations agencies say, as and as negotiations between Israel and Hamas reach a potentially pivotal point. 
Uh, let me see here. Yeah, in the initial account, Israel said Gaza residents surrounded the aid trucks and looted and uh, aid trucks and looted the supplies. During the incident, dozens of Gazans were Gazans were injured as a result of pushing and trampling. IDF told CNN. So essentially, that's their justification for this: is that oh, they were looting and also they threatened us. Like when we came to the scene, they were threatening us. And so then we had to fire upon them. We didn't have a choice. And it's like, what do you mean? Like you were putting these people into these situations. They have no food. They have no, they have no real aid. They're getting crumbs in. And now you're saying here, here's a, a potential lifeline. And you're in this long ass fucking line. You can't wait to just find out that, oh, there's no more, there's no more aid here. There's no more food. Sorry. You're just gonna have to keep going. You and your family are just gonna have to do without like these are literally the most dire desperate situations that you can put a human being in and they're acting like oh well you know like they were acting crazy so we had to shoot like no dude and then they do the fallback of well you know i mean there's some moss anywhere and everywhere so like they threatened us so you know we had to act, we had to act and it, it's crazy like it's it is so insane that they act like that is a, a cover to the crimes that they're doing um, I mean, I really don't know how any other way to word it personally. Um, so yeah, I mean, I knew I just, I wanted to cover this. I knew that the situation has been really rough with the aid and I, I didn't really know exactly how I was going to mention that. I was, you know, kind of wanting to see if maybe we could get to a ceasefire or something, but, uh, no, it, it looks like old Joe was fucking wrong about that shit. And I, and I love that he tries to like put it on this is like, oh, well, I, I might not have been right about my Monday prediction on the ceasefire. You know, like obviously this is going to complicate things. Yeah, yeah, dude. I think IDF soldiers just massacring a bunch of people is going to complicate the conversation, old Joe. <sighs> But I know, I know he's out there. He's talking. Um, he's on the Mexico border right now. Him and Trump, they 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 having a little a little powwow, three hundred miles away from each other. That's a whole other thing. We might get to another day. But um, man, I mean, this shit it it's fucking sucks. And I know, um, it's hard to cover. I know, I'm sure in certain it's hard to listen to. But um, you know, I know we got to talk about this shit. We got to keep learning and hopefully coming up with something to do. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what else I can personally do. So that, that's all I, I, I can do is yap about this shit. And I'm not going to stop yapping about this shit. Anyway, um, we have another thing to cover. Um, more conflict from Al Jazeera. Troops deployed Internet shutdown in Chad's capital amid deadly violence. Security forces in Chad have surrounded the headquarters of the Socialist Party Without Borders, PSF, after accusing elements of the main opposition party of launching a deadly attack on the country's international security agency. The violence in Njema Wednesday came as tensions rise ahead of a presidential election set for May and June that could return Chad to constitutional rule after three years of military-backed rule. Yo, I, we need to like come up with a drinking game this year. I think last year it would have been like any time I talk about a plane incident or train especially train oh yeah especially around this time last year i feel like it was definitely train talk um but this year it's definitely election when am i gonna say an election like <laughs> i feel like you could get pretty drunk um off of that or at least tastefully drunk right i, I try to space them out right when and where i can but it's like god damn um but let's see Let, let's let's get into this the violence in, in, in Jimma on wednesday came as tensions rise ahead of a presidential election set for may and june did I already read that? I did. I'm sorry. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Idris, reporting from Abuja in neighboring Nigeria, said the situation in Najama remained fluid. Uh, let's see here. We understand that the security operations are still ongoing. The headquarters of the Socialist Party Without Borders remains under siege. Security forces have been deployed on the streets of the capital. Internet and telephones have been disrupted in most parts of the city. Um, let's see here. Uh, the siege on PSS headquarters came after Chad's government issued a statement saying several people have been killed in an overnight attack on the National State Security Agency, or the ANSE. Uh, blaming the activists for the PSF attack, the government said the situation is now completely under control. Um, they didn't say how many people were killed in the attack, but um, let's see. Detailing a separate incident, the government said a member of the PSF, 
Ahmed Torabi had carried out an assassination attempt against the president of the Supreme Court, Samir Adam Anur. To Torabi was arrested, it said. However, the PSF gave a different account of the incidents. Party leader y uh, Yaya Dillo said the attack on the Supreme Court was staged while PSF General Secretary uh, told the Reuters News Agency that the deaths near the security agency occurred when soldiers opened fire at the group at a group of party members. He said Tarobi had been shot dead on Tuesday and his body was deposited at the agency's headquarters. When party members and Tarobi's uh, relatives went to look for his body at the agency, soldiers shot at them, which resulted in multiple deaths, the general secretary, secretary said. The attack on ANSI happened just hours after Chad announced it would hold a presidential election on May 6th. Opposition figure Dillo and his fierce opponent, Chad, tr Chad's transitional president, Mamat Idris Debi, Ito, it, Itno, uh, intended to contest. Both men are cousins. Debi Itno came to power after his father, Idris Debi Itno, was killed while fighting rebels in 2021. The ruling after ruling the desert nation for three decades. Uh, let's see here. So essentially he had said, hey, you know, I'm going to give power to this election process. You know, I'm not going to get in the way of things. But then he also added, I'm also going to be throwing my hat in the ring. So you love to see that. And then, of course, you know, now all of this is kind of, you know, ensuing. Um, you know, I, I mean, I personally don't know what side to choose here. You know, I, I think my instincts go, oh, well, you should just probably, you know, maybe, maybe it is the PSF that is right here and, and, and the power is, is trying to maintain and wield power, but I just don't have enough details. I'm, you know, as always a guy who's just reading things off of articles. I don't have enough details. I don't have enough context. I don't really have enough um, you know, understanding of the situation, if I'm being completely honest, but, um, you know, sometimes I, I kind of get, throw myself into a situation and say, what are the vibes? Um, so yeah, I mean, but that being said, you know, no matter how you slice it, no matter what camp you're landing in, it's definitely a tumultuous time for Chad, for sure, and, um, I didn't want to not cover this or, you know, let it fall by the wayside or anything like that, so I'll try to keep you posted on anything else I learn from this situation. Uh, but let's move on to another country, another issue from the BBC. Ghana passes bill making identifying as LGBTQ plus illegal. Ghana's parliament has passed a tough new bill that imposes a prison sentence of up to three years for anyone convicted of identifying as LGBTQ plus. It also imposes a maximum five year jail term for forming or funding LGBTQ plus groups. Lawmakers heckle down attempts to replace prison sentences with community service and counseling. And I got to say, I think this is just one guy saying like, look, I know it's, it's, I, I've talked you guys off the ledge, which I got to say, like they actually did. Like some of the shit that they were trying to do was just like, like they were getting down to the point of like, we want to do like conversion therapy on you if we find out you're gay and we, we catch you being gay. And it's like, what like no dude that's like that that is like shades down from like we're gonna give you a lobotomy type shit to me as far as i'm concerned it, it is a slow pressed way of trying to say we're going to literally torture the gay out of you and uh then you'll be all fit and shipped and ready to go as, as a civilian it's like fuck that shit man no like let me be a human being um but yeah, no, that that we we've we've talked ourselves down from the ledge and now it's like yeah we're just gonna throw you in jail for five years because you, you you have a lifestyle that's different than what we want and our our religious uh, you know ideology it's not fitting you know what I mean you're not fitting the square so you got to be fucking punished it's crazy um, granted I think I did have this highlighted somewhere yeah, gay sex is already against the law in Ghana it carries a three year prison sentence but essentially they're like no we have to do more we want to do more and um, this is where we've wound up which is insane to me it, it is crazy. Activists fear there will now be witch hunts against members of the LGBTQ plus community and those who campaign for their rights and say some will have to go into hiding. I think they said the reason for this was there was like a, a like a gay rights like health center that got opened up or something. And that was like a red line, which, yeah, heaven forbid people want to have like a place where they can feel safe in, in, in a hostile area like this. Like, 
it's frustrating because it literally leaves you as a person who is gay. Like, you have to literally hide who you are. You have to stifle yourself. Otherwise, you can literally go to jail if someone finds out. Not to mention, someone can literally just make something up or say whatever. Like, this literally is a actual factual witch hunt. I'm not talking about that bullshit that Donald Trump keeps trying to spout because they're trying to take his fucking money. Like, bro, no, you did those crimes. <laughs> but, um... It's just, it's heartbreaking. It really is to know that like, it, there's just, and that this isn't an isolated incident. Last year, we, I believe we were talking about Uganda in this fucking shit. We've talked about, you know, the same kind of fucking shit in other countries. You know what I mean? This is why I, I, I tend to lean when I look at the world of the bird's eye view and I hate this shit. It makes me want to fucking barf, but we're so socially conservative. Like, we, we do enough to kind of keep on airs and say that, oh, we're, we're, we're a well-mannered society. But truthfully, we want to do this quote-unquote traditional-ass lifestyle, this old-ass fucking shit that, like, doesn't make any fucking sense and we're supposed to have grown out of as a people. No, no, no. We got to embrace these these Christian traditional roots, brother, sister, cousin. Like, what the fuck? Like, just get out of here with this shit. Like, I will always rail against this shit, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely a darker turn for Ghana. I hate to see it. Uh, I, I will say I'm glad that there's at least some one stepping up here because it seems like overall the two majority parties in, in the conversation in Ghana were like, no, nah, we're cool with this. Like, we, we like this shit. Because once again, we're talking elections and people want to keep the populist vote. They want to keep that shit. It doesn't matter whether you're, you're, you're left or right. I don't know the affiliations of the, of the two parties mentioned, but it's just one of those things where um, – yeah, actually, I'm going to read this guy's name. I wanted to at least give him the shout out. During the uh, days-long debate, the deputy parliamentary leader of the governing party, Alexander Finio Markin, suggested further changes. He said lawmakers should decide via secret ballot whether people convicted of being members of the LGBTQ community should be imprisoned by the courts or ordered to do community service and undergo counseling. So I'm not really giving him any positive notes here because you shouldn't have to do community service or fucking counseling to be not gay but like i'm hoping that you're doing this in, in terms of like saying hey i'm trying to give you guys at least a little like a, like something and hopefully it's not once again jail time but um it's just it's fucked up it's a fucked up goddamn world you know and i hate to see that shit um i hate to see that shit spread and, and get deeper um in societies and nation states and shit like that but um yeah, that that's where we're at with that. I think I want to leave that there. We have one more thing I wanted to cover before I let you go. We're going to take it to the states. Um, we're, we're still talking politics. It's not really a palate cleanser, really. It's Republican related, but, you know, I got to get the story in. So let me take my last break and then we'll go ahead and cover it. Okay, our last story comes from Axios. RNC Chair Ronna McDaniel stepping aside for Trump loyalist. Republican National Committee Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel is resigning on March 8th. She said in a statement Monday after former President Trump easily run, won the South Carolina primary on Saturday. McDaniel's resignation came after a pressure campaign from Trump, who has endorsed a triumvirate of loyalists to take over the RNC. Michael, Whit Michael Watley, uh, chair of North Carolina GOP to become the leader. Trump campaign uh, senior advisor Chris Lavasita to effectively become, or to effectively serve as um, chief operations officer, I believe, or COO. His daughter-in-law, Laura Trump, to serve as co-chair. So he just uh, just took over, and it's crazy to me. And I, I believe the situation was at hand uh, that that were the knocks against uh, McDaniel was one. I believe after the New Hampshire primary, Trump wanted the RNC to just call it. He's like, "Look, I've literally stacked the goddamn deck. We don't have to go anywhere else, dude. I'm gonna win Nevada. I'm gonna win South Carolina. We don't have to keep having this conversation. Just." dub me the primary, you know, candidate 
Republican primary candidate, and let's just move on. And she's like, ah, uh, well, no, I don't want to do that. Let's wait. Let's just let this, you know, matriculate. Let's just let the numbers play out because Haley is still in. She hasn't quit, which makes sense. By the book, that's what you're supposed to fucking do. Of course, that's that's a that's a red letter against her. Then there's another thing. Trump, as we've talked about, is stacked up with legal debt. He is already having to talk about like having to sell property estates if like they don't treat him as like a poor man and be like, oh, oh, I can't afford to give you hundreds of millions of dollars. Can we just settle for like, uh, like just a hundred million and then a hundred million? Like, can we just like, just, just tamper it down? Please, 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 please. I can't afford it. You'll take me to the poor house. Um, so essentially he's been mounting this campaign of trying to like, and he's honestly done it really, where he's fused the campaign and his legal troubles into one thing. It's all now one amalgam for him. And he wanted the RNC to instead say, hey, let's take this campaign money and let's make that shit work into my fucking legal shit. Let's just do that. Let's run that now. Rana, do it. And she's like, I, uh, I, I'm not gonna say I won't do it. I'm just not sure we should do that yet. Maybe, maybe we should, maybe this should just be campaign money, dot, dot, dot. And <laughs> Game of Thrones, axed her. She's gone now. <laughs> so now he's three deep stacked on the RNC. Um, and this really did have me thinking. Because I remember when when Biden won. And I was like, look, I know this shit isn't over. I know it's not over. I know he's going to try to run again. Even if he doesn't run again and he's just jet skiing in Mar-a-Lago, Trumpism isn't done. Like, before the Trumpism shit, it was the Tea Party-style fucking tactics that, like, conservatives were doing. And, like, this just paired so well. It just literally put a face on it and it just worked and it evolved into this. So it's like, okay, I get that. But I'm thinking, like, well, where are we going to go from here? What's the next beat? What's the next evolution? But it turns out... This beast isn't done growing yet. And here we are now. Like, I mean, we've we've covered this shit. We've talked about this shit. Like, not only has Trump just not just been like a fringe character, he's been in the mainstay of conversation. He's literally, you know, granted, he didn't do it with a deft hand. He wasn't super effective, but he's had his finger on the pulse. He's been like guiding these midterm elections that we had talked about previously in the past. I don't know why I said it that way, whatever. But and now he's literally talking to Republicans and, and the moves are getting made. I mean, we talked about McConnell leaving. Uh, part of that reason is because he's just old guard and Trump is the, the wave. Like, he couldn't really steer the party around this. And, and I'm talking about a very tactical fucking guy, a Palpatine level player, you know, not just in the face. OK, um, so it, it's crazy that Trump is not just still here. But he's still here in force. And not to mention Biden is just shooting himself in the goddamn dick. Um, which apparently still works, according to him. That's that's a more little side news. Yeah, he's still fucking, y'all. Him and Jill. That's that's right, Jack. He's not cutting out that malarkey. Uh, okay, I'm done. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that's, that's really it, though. That's the episode. Um, if you'd like to help out, support the effort, I do have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Isaiah News. You can become a newsie today, and uh, like I said, I shout you out and plug pro uh, project if you'd like. Let's see here. Uh, three ways to hit me up, IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com. Feel free to follow me or the um, podcast on the socials, any of them. I'm probably there with you. And um, hopefully you're subscribed to the YouTube. really helps out a lot if you are and uh, hopefully you like this episode. Hopefully hit uh, hit the comment section. Say a cool little quirky comment. Um, sharing this is awesome. But I mean, generally, just listening has just been it's 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 swell. I love seeing the number go up. Like, oh, someone listened, someone clicked. That's so cool. Um, it really does mean the world to me. But I just appreciate your support. You know, no matter how, whichever way. You know, it, it really is. Uh, it's the tops, baby. Anyway. That's it. That's all I have. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being a friend. And hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye.